All right. Hello, uh, everybody. A very good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us at this webinar uh, that's jointly organized by Sato teams in Singapore and Malaysia. All right, before we begin, just a very quick housekeeping announcement. All attendees are currently in view only mode. If you have any questions or encounter any technical difficulty during the webinar, please type them into the chat box. This webinar will be recorded and a copy of the webinar as well as the presentation slides will be shared with you after today. My name is Misha. I'm from Sato Global Business Services based in Singapore and I'll be your facilitator for today. I'm joined by my three wonderful colleagues from Malaysia and Singapore today. First, we have Daryl, who's in charge of solution development. We also have T King and Joven, who manage Sato's business in the food sector for Malaysia and Singapore, respectively. Please feel free to scan their QR codes to contact them at any time after the webinar. Here's the agenda for today. For those of you who are not familiar with Sato, we will briefly introduce who we are. We'll then go into the main topics for today, where we'll share some of the key government assistance food businesses can tap on, to overcome the various challenges COVID has caused to your business. We will also be sharing our expertise on how you can utilize auto ID solutions to automate and digitally transform your business in the face of these challenges. These solutions will also help you future-proof your operations for further growth beyond COVID-19. Sato has been around since 1940 and this year is actually our 80th year anniversary. Over the past 80 years, we've grown to be a leader in the auto ID industry. Our core business is to collect or generate data by tagging objects and people using auto ID technologies, such as barcodes, 2D codes, RFID, and more. We connect the data to your core IT systems to enable data optimization. In short, we connect the virtual, which is the data, and the physical, which is the objects and people, to bring across value for our customers through a wide range of industries, as you can see on the right side here, from manufacturing to healthcare, to food and beverage, retail, and more. We have offices in 27 countries around the world and looking at Asia itself, besides Singapore and Malaysia, we are also present in a number of different countries like India, Indonesia, Philippines, Korea, Thailand, just to name a few. Our international presence enables us to support multinational companies with operations worldwide. Now let's focus on the COVID-19 pandemic. Since this pandemic started in December 2019, this deadly virus has affected more than 33 million people around the world. It has not only taken the lives of people around us, it has also caused unprecedented disruptions on economies worldwide. I'm sure all of you would agree, businesses in the food sector have been adversely affected by the country lockdowns, business closures, food supply chain disruptions and other safety measures rolled out to curb the spread of this virus. One of the key impacts is the disruption to the global supply chain. At the start of this pandemic, many people rushed to supermarkets and swept off basic necessities, fresh fruits and vegetables, meats off the shelves. With the country lockdowns and other restrictions, Labor and food supply shortages affected not only end consumers, but also food businesses. Another key impact is the behavioral shift of consumers due to the safety measures and restrictions imposed by governments to protect all of us. Restaurant dining was suspended. Businesses could only take, offer takeouts or delivery. Non-essential businesses, they had to work from home and all these factors caused a significant shift to consumers' behaviors. Restaurants and food outlets in the business districts were severely affected 
due to a drop in demand from office crowds, they had to quickly offer delivery in order to survive. Demand for food delivery and online orders surged dramatically due to all these factors as well. The increase in food deliveries also brought along a greater concern for food delivery safety. Businesses have to ensure the safety of their food during delivery and also ensure the food is untouched and not tampered with during the delivery process. They also had to assure customers of the health status of delivery workers and minimize the level of contact between delivery workers and consumers. With businesses severely impacted by this pandemic, the governments of Singapore and Malaysia came up with various assistance programs to help businesses overcome these challenging times. Next, I will invite my colleagues, Tiking and Joven, to take you through these available programs. Tiking and Joven, please. Thank you, Misha. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joven from Sato, Singapore. I'm, I'm in charge of the sales in the food industry in Singapore. So today, I'll be explaining on the two grants. Uh, one is EDG, known as the Enterprise Development Grant. And the next is PSG, which is the Productivity Solutions Grant. First, I'll touch on the EDG. So what does EDG support? EDG supports a solution that actually promotes innovation and increases productivity. The costs that are covered include the party consult consultancy fees, software, equipment, and internal manpower costs. So as announced at the supplementary budget in 2020, this year, a few months back, the maximum level of support has actually been raised the 1st of April 2020 to the 31st December 2020. So for enterprises that are actually most severely impacted by this COVID-19, the maximum level of support may be raised to 90% on a case-by-case -case basis. So who can apply for this grant? To qualify for EDG, you need to be a business entity registered and operating in Singapore, have a minimum of 30% local shareholding, be in a, in a financially viable position to start and complete the said project. So for this grant, we do have uh, we do work with a consultancy firm that actually provide assistance for the application of this grant. So um, so long as uh, it is uh, our, our solutions which actually qualifies for this grant, we can actually link up you with together with this firm. And the next is a PSG, the Productivity Solution Grant, which support company keen on adopting IT solutions and equipments to enhance business processes. PSG covers sector-specific solutions and food industry is selected as one of them. This solution needs to be pre-scoped by various government agencies such as Enterprise Singapore, the NEA, which is the National Environmental Agency, and Singapore Tourism Board, the STB. For IT solutions, um, you can get a quotation from the pre-approved vendor and for the equipment, you are, you, are, you are able to actually source the equipment and get a quotation, but both of these has to be from the from the vendor that has already been pre-approved. For more information, you can actually visit GovAssist website. And over there, you can get the list of equipment and IT solutions that has been pre-scoped by the government. In terms of eligibility, govern, uh, so the following are the companies that are actually entitled to get these uh, pre-approved solutions. So they need to be uh, registered and operating in Singapore. And the, pro the purchase list and subscription of these IT solutions or equipment must be used in Singapore. And also, this company must have a minimum of 30% local shareholding. Currently, uh, Sato Singapore has actually two solutions that is undergoing approval from IMDA. Later, later during this webinar, I will point out which are the two solutions that we are applying the approval for. So next, I will hand over to my uh, Malaysian colleague, Tiking. Thank you, Joven, and thank you, Misha. And uh, very good afternoon to everyone who is attending this uh, webinar. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, on the Malaysia side, thus far, uh, we know that there's a RM35 billion short-term economic recovery plan to support workers, SMEs, and industries impacted by, of course, the COVID-19 outbreak and during the movement control order period. Now, I will just touch briefly on the three available grants, SBDG, ADF, and STTF, okay, for the benefit of the attendees over here. Okay, to start off, 
we will talk we will briefly talk about SME business digitalization grant now this grant was announced by the ministry of finance under the 2020 budget right to support SMEs to adopt digitalization measures in their operations the key seven areas supported by this grant will be digital marketing and sales e post point of sale hr procurement erp which also involves accounting and tax e-commerce and remote working now of course all malaysian smes are eligible provided that they are registered under the relevant laws of malaysia and the financing bank is there are two bank simpanan national and sme bank now take note that the submission closing date for this grant is 30th december 2020 next i will move on briefly to adf which is the automation and digitalization facilities the objective is actually to provide incentives for smes to automate processes and digitalize their operations with the goal of increasing productivity and efficiency. Now, the purpose of this grant is to purchase equipment, machinery, computer hardware and software, IT solutions and services, technology support services and other intangible assets with the aim of enhancing productivity, efficiency, and also uh, save the resources, be it manpower and time. Okay, eligibility will be opened up to all the SMEs approved by the National Entrepreneur and SME Development Council of Malaysia, in short, NESDC. Okay, now it is good to note that uh, the funds allocated will be approximately Ringgit Malaysia, 3 million per SME. And take note also, the due date for application is on 31st December 2020. For more info, the banks financing this will be SME Bank in Malaysia. Thirdly, will be the STTF, SME Technology Transformation Fund. Again, this fund is very similar to ADF, which I highlighted earlier, which is also to provide financial assistance to SMEs to adopt digitalization and automation in their operation. Okay, so again, the SMEs will need to be approved by the NESDC. Okay, and all SMEs in the services and manufacturing sectors are eligible. The purpose of financing is also the same as ADF, which is for equipment, computer, hardware, IT solutions, and technological solutions, with the aim also to enhance productivity and efficiency. Now, this financing amount minimum will be ranging from Ringgit Malaysia 100,000 to Ringgit Malaysia 3 million, and the tenure is up to 10 years. Again, this initiative is financed by SME Bank Malaysia and interested participants and attendees may approach SME Bank Malaysia for more information. Okay, so if you need more information, please reach out to us. Thank you very much. Over to you, Misha. Thank you, TK. So um, if you're interested in any of the uh, government assistance programs or grants over here, no worries. We will actually be providing the PowerPoint slides after the webinar. So you can actually click on each of these hyperlinks to go to the respective agency's websites to find out more. All right, let's move on. Sato supports automation and uh, digital transformation for food businesses across the entire supply chain from production to preparation to restaurant and delivery. Next, I'd like to invite uh, my colleague Daryl to take you through some of the common challenges faced by food manufacturers, which is in production, due to COVID-19 and how Sato can actually help to overcome these challenges. Daryl, please. Right. Uh, thank you, Misha. <laughs> right. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. 
So uh, as, the, as Michelle uh, introduced me earlier, I'm actually in charge of the solutions in Malaysia, all right, uh, whether it be the FMB industry or all the other related industries in Malaysia. So uh, please feel free to actually contact us if let's say you have any other inquiries other than the one that we are showing on the screen, okay? All right, basically in the current situation, uh, everyone is actually well aware of the challenges that you may see or uh, have in your current production area, right? Uh, even without the COVID-19 situation, there are actually some challenges that we actually need to address in order for us to improve our production output uh, with some traceability and accuracy as well. All right. So this is where actually Sato comes in to provide those additional values all right, with our proprietary solution that can actually help you to overcome these challenges. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, uh, there are actually some uh, common challenges that we are actually trying to highlight. Okay. Uh, such as labor shortages, longer production hours due to the current safety measures and SOP that our government has introduced to combat the coronavirus or the COVID-19, okay? So some of the safety measures that has actually been implemented such as like 50% uh, manpower that has to be cut in order to reduce the number of employees in the area, okay? So of course, without the uh, huge number of employees, this will actually result in the longer production hours and lower output, low, uh, sorry, lower production output, right? So this is where actually we have to come up with solution that can actually uh, increase the production output without the need of uh, huge labor or manpower, okay? So uh, the other uh, challenges that you might face in your current production is that you need to have a better inventory management, right? Some uh, inventory management such as uh, you are actually low on some raw materials or semi-finished goods, Right, then you are actually unable to produce the items or the foods that uh, you are intending to. So this will actually disrupt the supply chain where uh, you also see the demand and supply uh, by the consumer. Okay, so this is something that we are trying to address and if it's possible, we will actually uh, help to improve this in your current situation. Okay, so uh, last but not least is that uh, due to the COVID-19 situation, we actually have to conduct or monitor the health, the, our employees' health condition, example, by taking their temperature. Uh, I think in Singapore, you are taking it around like twice a day in the morning when you're coming into the office and also in the afternoon after your lunch, right? I think some company even goes as far as taking it before you leave the company as well, right? So uh, that is something that has to be done and we also have came up with some solution that actually automate the process of taking uh, the temperature for your employees, right? Where you do not have to actually station one person or example, your security guard or your HR to actually take the temperature one by one, all right? Okay, uh, moving on. All right, so some of the solution that uh, we would like to highlight, okay? Uh, Sorry, this is actually uh, the simplified version, okay? So if let's say you guys are actually interested and would like to know more, so just please feel free to contact us, okay? So one of the solutions that we are looking at is to actually automate any process where possible in your production area so as to address the uh, shortage of manpower, okay? So with the shortage of manpower, certain automation is definitely needed, right? So that you can actually increase not to say improve or increase, but to actually at least meet the same production output with lesser manpower, okay? So one of the solutions that we have in mind is that we have, uh, we call it the AEP label printing, okay? And with AEP, what we actually do is that we are actually able to connect our Sato printer, okay, to a device, uh, example, like the weighing machine or your wrapping machine or so on, okay, to automatically weigh and integrate or communicate with each other okay, to print the labels or uh, any ingredient packages or food rotation or expiry date labels uh, with the printer's built-in auto date time calculation, okay. So what we actually do is that in the certain production area, you cannot have, example, like a computer or a PC or a tablet or a laptop where it's actually uh, attracting dust okay, where it can actually compromise the safety and health regulation of your production area, all right? So what we actually do is that we do, need, we do not need those uh, equipments. We only need our printer and your example, weighing machine. So what we can do is that by integrating it and communicating between these two devices, you can actually save space and also print the label when 
uh, the food is measured or weighed in the correct uh, requirement. Okay, so this actually has been done with most of our customers and they are actually very happy to actually save, especially the, uh, the space where there's actually very limited space in the area. Okay, so of course, by printing the labels, uh, the next step is that you will actually have to apply those labels, right? So some customer will actually say that, hey, you know, um, printing the label is not a problem. The printer is printing it, but applying the label actually require more manpower or an additional effort from the employees, right? So what we actually do is that we actually have a print and apply uh, uh, solution where we can actually automize uh, the labeling, okay, without the need of uh, manpower. And we also minimize the contact to enhance any safety where uh, possible, okay? So we can actually apply uh, whichever related labels on the top, bottom, or side of the products or carton boxes, depending on your uh, uh, requirement. And this will actually improve your production output or speed. All right. So uh, there's actually, I can actually show you there's a video that we'd like to share. Okay. And, and uh, in the video, you can actually see how do. All right, so in the video, you can actually see that that is actually our screen. Okay, and there is the uh, uh, packaging. Okay, so this automated uh, solution actually increases the product option. without the need of a uh, man you know, one word manually so of course there are a few technologies that are actually incorporated uh, together to make this possible for example there's actually a sensor there's actually a conveyor as well so that all these Sorry, all these technology can actually come together to provide the best solution uh, based on your current environment. So what you are seeing in the video is actually uh, one of the customized solutions. So it actually can be retrofitted to actually be uh, made accordingly to your requirement. All right. So that is actually on the um, automation part where we can actually integrate with your any devices such as like, your weighing scale or your wrapping machine and so on. And of course on the print and apply is that once you actually uh, uh, print those labels, we can actually apply it without the need of uh, the same amount of manpower, right? So they can actually focus on another part of the production, all right? So another solution that we would like to share is actually to increase and uh, address the inventory issue, okay, where we increase the accuracy of your inventory, all right? So this solution is, we actually call it the Trace Eye Food Pro solution, okay? Where it actually eliminate uh, any manual processes to overcome the manpower shortage. And we also enhance the inventory management to reduce any cost or wastage, which actually all results in a dollar and cents, okay? So by using this solution, okay, first of all is that uh, we need to have a management all right, from the moment you are receiving, uh, whether it's your raw materials or your supplies from your supplier, and having an inventory and location transfer of uh, the, sorry, the movement of this operation for a greater inventory visibility. All right, so all this will actually result in a food safety and consistency of the food product quality is because of the traceability feature that is present in the solution. All right. So the first question is that how do we trace, okay, or how do we actually track the movement or the the traceability, right? How do we know that which batch or which lot number is actually being used, okay? So normally in the production area is that you will actually need to know, okay, uh, what is actually the expected production output based on which material and most importantly the FIFO control, all right? We actually have to use the materials that. Uh, that is specifically mentioned by uh, the planning department, okay? So this is where the system comes in, okay? We will actually manage and record each production process, okay? So 
when the items that are coming in from with a label, okay, example, you can see on the screen, there is a baking powder. Sorry, I think the picture is not so clear, okay, but there's actually a description of the item. There's actually the date of the receiving and maybe there is the best before or expiry date as well. Okay, and there is a QR code where we actually use uh, the QR code for scanning, okay, where it actually contains the information to verify and validate for the FIFO control, okay. So as you can see in point number two, okay, we can actually manage and record each of the production process before you do your weighing and your mixing details, all right. So what we do is that the moment you pick the supply that is needed for the production, you actually have to scan the QR code first. All right, and then by scanning, we can the system will actually alert to the particular user or the picker, this is the correct item. All right, then by incorporating with the weighing scale, you need to have some uh, pre, if you do have some pre-packing process, the weighing scale will actually pre the packing label when the right weight is achieved. All right. So some of the our customers that they when they weigh the item, there's actually a plus minus uh, or a contra, right? That uh, has to be allowed. For example, like five or ten percent due to the weighing scale constraint and so on. So don't be, don't worry. There's actually something that we can address as well, and those uh, measurement will be recorded into the system. All right. So by having point number one and two you can actually achieve point number three, which is the real-time inventory management, okay? So when you do your stock take or when you're going your, uh, doing the outgoing inspection or QC, so all this information will actually be present in the system, all right? So there'll actually be a video, just a simple video uh, to actually showcase the uh, Trace Eye solution, all right? So uh, we just briefly take you through the video and you can see how uh, real-time inventory is being used, all right? Okay, so this is where the instruction for the production is actually uh, being planned as I mentioned earlier, either by the production or the planning department. So those information is actually uploaded into our system. Okay, it can be actually integrated with your current process, whether it's Excel or so on. If you have any current ERP or any uh, material plan MRP system, we can actually integrate with them. So all this information like the materials, uh, the recipes or the bomb list can actually be assigned, eh, sorry, can be uploaded into the system. And from there, we will actually assign who is the person and what we need to take from the system. Alright, so to ensure that this quantity is actually accurate, there actually be a weighing scale as you can see in the video. Okay, the system will actually say that you need uh, 500 grams, all right? And if it's actually more than 500 grams, uh, the printer will not print the label. So once the desired or the correct weight is uh, done, then you will only be able to print the label. And you have the information of like where it's supposed to go and so on. So this is actually the contra, sorry, the, the allow tolerance or the allowance that I was talking about earlier. And if it's required, it can be actually be separated into two different packaging. Right? The system will automatically identify what was the difference between the weight. So this will be 395, 0.395 gram a kg, and the other one will be the remaining, which is 0.105. Okay, so this is actually very uh, useful for customers who are using, uh, doing repacking for different kind of items and supplies before handing it over to the production or the kitchen area. Okay, so in the video you are showing that it's actually using a manual uh, label applying solution, but if it's required, we can actually use the same approach with the print and apply solution. Okay, so this is actually the uh, barcode scanning, all right? So before you actually charge out or issue the, out the materials, you actually have to do a barcode scanning based on the production order. And you will scan the QR code that is actually on the label.
So the charging sequence is actually the 5-4 control that I just mentioned. So you actually need to charge based on uh, what the system has actually identified for the user. So this will ensure that all the instruction has been followed and you can actually trace back on the process. You can actually reverse trace from the uh, finished good output based on the batch or lot number. So of course, there will be a reporting at the end of all the process. You can actually export or view this report uh, based on the filter that you require, whether by date or whether by the order number. So this will actually depend on how you would like to customize and generate the report. Daily, monthly, weekly is actually possible. Alright, so that is just a quick introduction of the uh, Trace Eye Food Pro solution. Alright, so basically that's it for the uh, production area. Okay, so moving forward is that this is the solution that I've mentioned that we actually specifically developed by Sato ourselves for the uh, COVID based on the COVID nineteen situation in uh, in the world. Alright, so this solution has been shared to everyone, all the, our uh, colleagues in the. Uh, in Sato, okay, so example, Singapore is also using something similar as well, all right. So, uh, in the first solution, you can actually see there is a my QRID face recognition and a contactless temperature screening, all right. So, uh, I think most of you know that uh, in your current environment, you are using actually uh, the access card, right, uh, or you're using the fingerprint to actually, fingerprint sensor to actually record your employees clock in, clock out, and so on. And by with this contact in place, okay, even by using a thermometer or a separate device to measure the temperature, there might be some contact between one person and another, and this will actually result in the in the spread of the virus. All right. So what we are trying to do is that we came up with a face recognition uh, solution where we incorporate the face recognition to recognize who are the employees okay with actually the door access and also taking the temperature at the same time all right so using the as, as you can see on the screen on the step one we actually use the qr code as well to actually record down the visitor information okay so for as a simple visitor management system is that we will know who is the visitor that is coming in and we do not need that particular visitor to pass us their example IC, ID or passport for us to record their details. So basically it will be a full contactless solution between the receptionist or the guard with the visitor. Okay, so there is actually a video uh, to actually explain further on what I've just explained. Uh, it'd be easier if you uh, can just watch the video and have a look. Okay, so this is the automatic identification of the employees. There will be a contactless temperature measurement and there will be a visitor tracking with the QR code label as well. All right. Okay, so we are actually using the face recognition technology so that you can identify whether it's a pre-registered employee or a visitor. Okay, then there's actually a contactless temperature measurement and once we've done either one, we will actually print a label for the visitor. Okay, so this is actually an employee self-check-in. So assuming this is an employee. Okay. The device itself will be able to is able to recognize whether you are wearing a mask or otherwise. Okay, so if let's say you are wearing a mask, it will actually record that you are wearing a mask and the temperature upon scanning, and it will show you that uh, what is your staff ID.
Okay, so this is, uh, that is actually for the employee and this is actually for the visitor. Okay, so when the visitor is uh, scan their face uh, and based on the facial recognition, they will know that this is not an employee. So they will actually have to scan the QR code and key in their details. So we will record this visitor information with the temperature, temperature that was scanned earlier. All right. So this is a visitor, simple visitor management. Who are they meeting and who, what is the reason of their meeting? Okay, then we will actually print a label to be, to be paste onto their attire. Okay, so that any visitors in the building, when they see this label, you have an identification that they have actually went through the temperature screening process. Right, so they are actually quite safe. So if this is a pre-registered user, okay. So what they need to do is that they do not need to scan the QR code and input the details, whereas they just show the QR code to the guard or the receptionist. Then they will immediately just scan and they will know who is this person and goes the same as what is the reason of their visit. So of course, if someone's temperature is above uh, 37.5, then the device will actually capture that it's actually abnormal and they have to be uh, assist for further process. All right, so this is actually the face recognition and the contactless uh, temperature screening solution. And I think that is the end of my presentation. So I hope it was okay. If you have any questions, just drop those uh, what your concerns in the question and answer section. All right, handing back over to you, Misha. Thank you, Daryl. Moving on, uh, we will have uh, Tiking to share with us the common challenges faced by food preparation. Tiking, please. Okay, uh, food preparation challenges. Now, uh, in this category of food preparation, it encops it uh, encapsulates a few uh, discrete industry. Okay, for example. Food preparation here will also mean central kitchen, okay? Central kitchen here, it can also mean uh, there will be one central kitchen, they will prepare their food, okay? And then they will deliver to all the individual outlets. Central kitchen will also be present in any individual outlet for that matter, okay? The other, the other category would also be inside the restaurants or cafes where they will prepare their own food for that particular outlet. So this is the area that uh, we are addressing. Okay, now common challenges that we see uh, during this pandemic, of course, will be the shortage of skilled and experienced workers. Because there'll be a lot of uh, changes uh, to the working environment whereby now it is considered physical distancing. So we can't have too many workers working in the same area of the of the kitchen setting or where you prepare your food. So sometimes there will be new, new, new workers coming in. So how do we ensure that uh, these workers are easily able to catch up with the requirements of food preparation, like expiry date, the ingredient, how to properly see which type of food that they can use to prepare to cook and uh, what are the right type of food. So. We will have solution on how to, first of all, reduce and also eliminate the use of a lot of handwritten or manual processing of all this data so that it is easier for the workers to know with confidence what are the right products, ingredients, recipes, fresh products to use for food preparation. Next will be also to ensure safety of food ingredients with accurate date and time labeling. Now, one of the uh, key requirements that the Ministry of Health in Malaysia and I believe in Singapore as well has come up is now during this 
during this time, we see a lot of takeaways. We see a lot of uh, food delivery, packed foods happening. And it is a requirement that all these fat, packed food products will need to have the date and time of the expiry date or the use by date. Or some of them, we call it the best before date. Now, writing on it, we will try, we, we, our, our ultimate goal is to reduce and also eliminate manually handwritten process because you may write dates like uh, date and month. Some, they may choose to write month and day. So how do we standardize it with a, with a digitalized label, which is uh, clearly and uh, confidently to show properly onto the food packet. So this is actually a core requirement by the Ministry of Health in Malaysia and also Singapore. Now, greater need for better in inventory to overcome supply chain disruptions. This is also another solution that we have in Sato to make sure that the raw materials, the ingredients, the fresh produce that you have, the recipes that you use during food preparation stage, how do you know that, okay, it is sufficient, uh, that it will, that you will have a proper label expiry date or use by date so that you get the right dates or you get the right quantity to produce so that and also whether or not your fresh produce or your raw materials are sufficient for you to produce for this week's uh, food preparation as well as uh, these few days. Okay, so with this, you can ensure con with a system in place that Sato can help you, you have a system in place to make sure that all these are being taken care of and after that, what you do is you will be able to concentrate more on fulfilling your customers' needs. Finally, will be the stringent policies and measures to monitor staff's health and hygiene. Now, this will be echoing what, we, what my colleague Daryl has presented earlier, which is the temperature screening solution. Because now every staff or any workers will need to get their temperature checked and make sure that they are fit for work. And also, once they are fit for work, we hope to eliminate all the possible contaminations of viruses that will occur during the food preparation stage. Okay, now in the next slide, I will briefly show to you one of the solutions that Sato have in the food preparation sector. Now, in the top right corner here, you will see a printing system, which is the Sato's FX3LX printing solution. It is actually a 7-inch touchscreen thermal printing solution. And then uh, on top and then embedded underneath will be Sato's outstanding printing mechanism, thermal printing mechanism. Now the top part is a touchscreen, 7-inch touchscreen whereby it is very similar to the smart device or the smart tablets that you currently have. It runs on air, okay? And it is perfectly used in the kitchen environment because first thing, it is a standalone printer. That means you do not need to connect this system or this printing device to any PC or any system. It can run on its own. The other thing is, why do I say it's perfect for the kitchen environment is, first thing, the casing of the printer is coated with a layer of antimicrobial coating. Okay, antimicrobial meaning to say that with this coating, the printer is able to inhibit the growth of microorganism that may contaminate the printer. Now, this is very important in the kitchen setting or where you prepare your food. Okay, not necessarily kitchen, but places where you prepare your food. Why? Because in itself, you need a very clean environment. And because of this printer has the antimicrobial casing, it will be able to uh, complement the hygienic environment that you need to operate the printer in. The second point I would like to touch on is it is actually splash proof. Okay, now we know that in the kitchen setting of where you prepare your food, it tends to get wet a little bit here and there. Okay, so not to worry, this printer all around it is actually splash proof, that means the water splashes water droplets will not sit inside the printing mechanism, so you are protected. Thirdly also is 
it is able to operate even if you wear gloves and accessing the printer touchscreen. Okay, so this is the few key features that makes this printer definitely suitable in your food preparation environment. Okay, this printer being standalone, it has uh, all the connectivity that we could ever think of in a smart device. Okay, it is Wi Fi connected. It has Bluetooth inside, or if you choose, you may also have it on a wired network LAN and also USB. So basically, and also it has also the NFC so-called RFID features, the NFC near field communication features. Okay. Now, if you were to look at the, now, what, what, what would this printer, what would this printing mechanism help in terms of our food preparation side? If you look at the bottom, uh, bottom right, the three different types of labels that you have here. Okay, you can see that the main feature of this printer, it is able to automatically print out food ingredients, food item name, and most importantly, the date and time of when it is prepared, when it is good to use, and when will it expire. Not only that, it can take up a lot more information like what are the ingredients that you are putting into this printer? What are the allergens that you need to take note of? Okay, if let's say uh, certain food products you have uh, milk content, peanut that is actually allergen to some people. So you can actually print it out digitally instead of writing. Okay, so what I'm showcasing here is actually to eliminate or is to overcome the need for a handwriting process onto the food label so that everything is clearly presented, okay, clearly marked, and the user or the, or, or the consumer, when they look at it, they know that, okay, when should I eat this? Or when should I consume this? How should I store this food product? Is it in the freezer or is it in the refrigerator? And also, if you look at the bottom right section of the label, there is few color indicator there. Now, this is what we call color-coded labels or color coding system, which is actually uh, a very important control factor in the food preparation environment. Different colors may mean different colors are uh, different control points of the day, or it could mean uh, different, different months of the year. So it depends how you, how you want to use it. The moment you see that, okay, there's a purple color with a, with, a, with a day written on it, you know that, okay, by Sunday, which is standard purple color, you need to discard it or you need to use it. So, with the auto calculation feature built into the printer, auto calculation here means they will auto calculate the expiry or the best before date and time. You do not need to refer to any chart or any manual or even look at the clock to start your own manual way of calculating. Let's say if this will expire in six hours, so I need to do a manual calculation. No, you do not need to burden or you do not need to uh, burden your staff on calculating the right hours. Everything is pre-programmed using the built-in clock feature in the printer. All you need to do is just select key in how many pieces of labels you want and then print it up. So this is one of the features that will help customers in the food preparation area to switch over from manual to digitize proper labeling. And also this is the requirement from our ministry. Okay, secondly, we can connect this printer to a wide range of devices and equipments that you commonly see in the fruit preparation area. First of it will be the weighing scale. It is very similar to how my colleague presented during the Trace iFood Pro video. Connecting a weighing scale to the printer, once you weigh it at the right weight, the data will be transferred to the printer. You can print it out and then label it to show that, okay, this weight, this is the right weight that you use instead of manually writing it down again. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. The other connection that this printer is able to work with is a temperature probe. Okay, you can use either the Bluetooth temperature probe. 
okay, or the other USB temperature probe. Now, the good thing about this is once you're connected to the temperature probe, you'll be able to measure the core temperature of the food that is being prepared. And keeping the data, storing it electronically, and also printing it out saying that, okay, now, while this food product is being, is being uh, prepared, this food item is being prepared, what is the core temperature then? And when it is ready to serve, you could also use a temperature probe to probe it again and to say that, okay, now this is the right temperature range for us to serve this food product. So, and again, another label can be printed out so that uh, it has a visual identification that to say that, okay, this batch of food products are ready to, are ready to be able to serve or cook it. So with all of this and multiple features of this printer being uh, to be used, you get accurate labeled food ingredients and products, and also you can enable the food safety practice that is that will be uh, used, which is the first in first out management FIFO, enhance stock level visibility, and also prevent wastage. Okay, because with the right label, properly labeled products, you will know that which are the items that will expire, that you will use it first or you will consume it first. Okay, so next. What we will show you is a video okay, of all the features that this printer has for you to take a look. You can wall mount the printer to store space. screen you can even show photos to display the actual product touch and print select and print the ingredients are all there the information is all there the expiry date is all there now, this is another good feature. It plays video too. With sound. Okay, before the next slide, I would like to touch a bit more uh, another very exciting feature of the printer, which is just now, as you see in the video, you can actually put in videos Colored photos, the videos you can play with sound inside the printer so that there are a few uses for this. First thing is, let's say you have a new set of ingredients or some recipes that you would like to quickly train your workers to prepare it. All right. So you can actually load it into the printer, be it by Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or the network LAN. And play it while playing it, there will be a step-by-step -step guide. You can program it any way that you like. So that while, while getting the ingredients ready, they could look at the printer with the video playing and then start learning how to prepare some new recipes so that you save the need to have uh, your chef or your key persons to go and uh, train individual outlets. So all of this, you can just uh, send to all the printers in various outlets within Malaysia or all the different regions and they will know what to do and know what to prepare by just playing on the video. At the same time, this printer also is preloaded with about uh, 15 videos on how to operate the printer or how to maintain the printer and how to use the printer. Now, this is also very important for the, for the fruit preparation site in the sense that whenever there's any issue or if you need to retrain your new colleagues or your new workers to use the printer or to handle the printer. All of this is actually, you can play the video. It's a step-by-step -step video. You can pause it, play it, and then start the training session. Now, this saves time, okay? And this gives a more confidence level to your worker to use this printing system in their work environment to quickly get things done, okay? So next slide, 
okay, which Michelle will show here, will be a success case for us, for we have uh, deployed this solution in uh, Burger Lab, Malaysia. Now, I think all of you all would know, Burger Lab is a fast food restaurant chain in Malaysia with six retail outlets serving about 2,000 burgers sold per day. They, will ha they have a central kitchen serving retail stores and handles many ingredients every day and thus require an efficient solution to better manage their food stock rotation. That means uh, the first in, first out, the food expiry date. Now, the challenges that they face currently before the deployment of this solution is time consuming and unproductivity. Managing ingredients manually was the way that they did before the implementation of solution in the central kitchen. So they found out that it takes too much time for them when they are managing all the ingredients manually and it slows down the productivity. The second challenge that they have will be the inaccurate stock count and inventory record. Handwriting method caused many human errors during stock count. Inaccurate inventory records lead to in incorrect stock replenishment, which results in unnecessary food wastage. Sometimes the ingredients or the recipes that they need did not come in time because of inaccurate stock count. And also they need an avenue to provide complete food safety reassurance to their customers and also to the outlet staff when they are preparing the food items. So in addition to great tasting food, to them, to the customer, it is important to provide consumers with full assurance of their food safety. Okay, so Sato came out with a solution, which is uh, our FX3 LX, the printer that you saw just now, AEP food labeling. Okay, so it runs on an AEP solution, which is an app, standalone app using on FX3 food printer. And uh, with this app, my Burger Lab can use a customized app to print date labels for ingredient rotation in the central kitchen. And definitely, by far, it improves the efficiency and accuracy for food safety assurance. What this translates to is basically, we first of all help them move away from the traditional method of uh, manually handwriting and manually recording all their food information. Okay? So, and then not only that, the labels are actually printed with a QR code on top. So by scanning with the QR code and by them scanning the QR code, they will now conduct stock count easier, scanning the QR code with a scanner with greater efficiency and precision. And with all these inventory records that are accurate, they can make good decisions on stock replenishment and also avoid unnecessary food waste stage. And also, finally, it will be saving cost to them. Okay, so uh, this is a case study. And, uh, if you need any more of this uh, similar case study for Sato in Malaysia and Singapore that we have deployed this solution, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to talk to you, understand your challenges and give you a wide range of ideas how to overcome it. Okay, so uh, yes, that's all on my side. Thank you very much, Misha. Thank you, TK. All right, so um, after the uh, food uh, preparation stage comes the restaurant or the retail stage. So next, I'll invite my colleague Jovan to take us through uh, some of the common challenges faced in this um, area, as well as how Sato can actually help to address these challenges. Jovan, please. Hi everyone, this is Jovan again. I would like to add on a bit for the FX3 solution, which Tiken has just mentioned. That is actually one of the two solutions which we are actually currently applying under the PS3, PSG pre-approved solution. This ready-to-use package actually consists of FX, the FX3 printer, labels, two AEP templates. One is the SFA's four hours consumed by template, and the other one is the second shelf life template. And also, that there will be one... For those who are interested, do drop me an email, a text or a call so that I can follow up with you when we have this solution approved. Next, I will be talking about two topics. First on the solutions, solutions which, sorry, uh, next I'll be talking about two topics. Uh, one will be for the solutions that we have for restaurants and the retail businesses. And the next will be delivery 
in food businesses. Okay, so in this climate, due to the COVID-19, the government requires restaurants and shops to implement a few measures, and they are to do temperature screening for all customers entering the shop, ensure there is safe distancing within the premises, and as well as ensuring that visitor capacity does not exceed the limit. With all these measures in place, more manpower are actually needed to execute them. I will go through some of the solutions that we have that can actually help businesses carry these measures. So next, yeah. So one of the solutions that we have is the safe distancing stickers or labels. Other than providing software or hardware solutions, um, Sato actually provide various kinds of labels for all sorts of different industries, from medical. Uh, we actually can on their floors, on their walls, or on their tables to constantly remind their customers on maintaining safe distance with one another in the shop. We do have also have a wide range of labor materials available, like materials that does not leave residues on services or weatherproof stickers, which is suitable for outdoor usage. Additionally, we can customize the sticker design or size according to your requirement as well. Next, uh, next will be on food labeling. Okay, this is slightly similar to uh, the FX3 solution, which uh, Ticket has just mentioned. I will just run through this quickly. I believe that most of you who owns a restaurant or central kitchen will have a kind of labeling system in place, either for ingredients, takeaway, product labeling, or second shelf life for certain items. So rather than having to print these labels out with a typical com computer combined with a label printer solution, which uh, can take out a lot of space, and space is a concern, especially for small kitchens. And uh, some other uh, restaurants actually use manual writing, which actually take up time and often result in inaccuracy. So this, uh, we have a solution in this uh, FX3. Uh, it's a seven inch label printer and it is able to store all the databases and your staff can actually print the required labels without the need to connect to a computer. It's a totally standalone solution. And on top of this, uh, for companies that have multiple outlets running across the country, we have this uh, feature called the Sato App Storage, which is actually a cloud solution. Basically, the are actually solely controlled by the HQ itself. This is so that all the data in the printer can be synchronized at all times across all outlets. So um, that's all for full labeling. And next, I'll talk about our visitor capacity management system. Okay, the intention of this solution is actually to prevent overcrowding and creating a safer environment for the staff and their customer. This solution is suitable for any businesses that requires visitor capacity management. And it consists of this FX, uh, one FX3 printer with the AEP software installed and a scanner for scanning the QR code. And of course, the consumer numbers, which is the labels. So the process of this solution goes like this. When the customer walks in, the staff will scan the QR code, which will trigger the printer to print out the sticker. So a plus one will automatically be added to the visitor account in the store. So the customer will therefore keep this sticker and she, can, she or he can actually choose to keep it or just stick it on his clothing. So upon leaving the store, he or she will scan the label again. So there will be another similar set of this solution actually at the exit. So this will, so upon uh, again at the exit, this will result in a minus one to the visitor come in the store. So in, a, in an event where the full capacity of uh, the store has been reached, the printer will not issue a new sticker to the new visitor, therefore denying the entry and will only print once someone else left the store. This way, the number of visitors in the store is always within the allowed numbers and is updated real time. So next, let's have a look of how it works. With COVID-19. With COVID-19 still a risk around the world, many consumers now prefer to shop where they know they will be safe. Your store must find ways to keep your customers and employees safe, all while running your daily, standard operations. The most effective way is to set a limit to how many people can enter your store. but this comes with some challenges. You have to control queues, take manual count, 
Keep visual track of entries and exits. Sato can help with a contactless, stress-free solution to count and track customer traffic. Store Associate scans a barcode to print an entry ticket for each customer entering the store. The customer shops, carrying the ticket as proof of entry, and scans the ticket when leaving the store. The printer keeps count and will stop printing when it reaches the quota. You can even set up sections within your store to track count in each section. RFX 3LX Printer Let you set up this system easily, with added features that keep your customers and employees safe. Contact Sato for solutions to your needs, and value to your customers' shopping experience. Yep, so basically uh, that's a video of how the whole thing works. So uh, next I'm going to touch on the solutions for all delivery. In this topic, I will touch on two types of solutions that we have. One is our label solution and the, the other is a system called the Collection and Delivery Management System, also known as CDMS. To, uh, this, is to, uh, this system is for companies to ensure that uh, their delivers, delivery services can now can have an overview and a control and also have control of the whole delivery process. So uh, first I will touch on the labels. So for labels, uh, uh, basically I'm going to touch on two types. One is our temper-proof label and the other one is the temperature label. So some of you might wonder what are temper-proof label? If you have ordered McDonald's uh, delivery before, uh, you would have noticed that uh, on their packaging, actually, they have these black rectangular labels which they actually use to seal their food packaging. This is to ensure customers that their food are sealed and not being tampered with during the delivery process. Especially now when many F&B businesses actually outsources, outsource their food delivery to companies like Grab, GrabFood or Foodpanda. So they are not actually able to have a full control uh, on this aspect for the delivery. So these stickers can uh, give an additional layer of security to their de delivered food. We are able to do such labels which has a security card with the customized design that you need. And if there is a need to print out certain information like QR code, best consumed by time, or even marketing information, these uh, labels can uh, be paired together with the FX3 as well for this purpose. And the next uh, is the temperature label, which can be used to actually start, uh, I'm sorry, stick it to your staff's clothing. So information on this label includes the temperature of your staff, the date and time that you took it. So this way, um, customers can be reassured that your, your staff has actually been checked before they start work. And you can have the option of whether to print this label out or not. If not, all this uh, information will actually be kept and recorded in the printer and it can be extracted for record keeping purposes to actually comply with the regulations to prove that the temperature of your staff are being taken twice a day. So next will be the CDMS. Okay, lastly, I'll touch on this um, last topic of the day, uh, which is CDMS, known as the Collection and Delivery Management System. This is a solution which we have collaborated with uh, Singapore Institute of Manufacturing Te Technology, also known as SimTech, where they actually developed the software, then uh, we actually uh, provided the hardware for, for so, MS is the standalone system. Second, we will receive the job. First, we label the goods. Jobs will then be assigned by the admin to, to the drivers. Then, when the so. Upon receiving the job, the driver will be pick out the goods and the correct items can be verified by scanning the barcode or QR code. Then the driver will, will deliver the item to the destination. So uh, during delivery, the de delivery route of the driver can be optimized based on the location and time. And collection acknowledgement can be done using a mobile app as well. So through this process, the admin is able to track all the orders and the driver's location. Okay, next, let's have a look at the video for you to further understand how this solution works.
story is taking a while. Hi everybody. Thanks for joining CDMS. CDMS helps companies to manage their items and services delivery efficiently. It provides you 100% real-time tracking, optimum route planning, flexible job assignment, genuine proof of delivery, RFID and barcode support, APIs for interacting with other systems, exception handling like delivery fail, partial delivery, etc. Let's take a look of live version. So the admin can actually create a task using the web-based platform. And assign it the uh, driver. The driver will assess the task mobile app. We option to edge of the item, and all these pictures and signatures, images, files will actually be saved. So when delivery done, the system automatically send a delivery report. The delivery report will contain your company logo, company name, all delivery information with photo and digital signature. For more queries, please contact us. Okay, um, this system consists of both web and mobile. The web application is actually what the admin mostly uses to actually create a task and assign the task. And uh, for the web and the end users, they will actually be. So uh, these are the, some of the features of the different users. For the admin, uh, like I mentioned, um, so uh, they're able to create and assign jobs, do the designing of the labor, tracking of jobs, and uh, even have a report at the end of the day. Then for the driver, basically uh, they are using the pick out the parcel and by scanning. Uh, during the de delivery, they can use the app, um, which is the best optimized route for the delivery. And they can also accept new or pending jobs with the app. And for the end user, uh, basically uh, they are able to actually track where's the real time parcel location of the of uh, the delivery and end of the, at the end of the delivery they can actually digital sign yeah. so for the benefits the whole process are all being done and recorded digitally and it effectively cuts down manpower needed to compare to when doing the manual process and it also reduces human errors so eventually this will actually help to improve the efficiency and increase the profitability for the whole company and this CDMS solution is actually the second solution that we are actually applying under the PSG and, uh, and this package includes the CDMS, CDMS software, the labeling software, uh, RFID or label printer, a laptop, three mobile phones and labels worth $1,000 and also uh, installation and training will also be included. Thanks of course so that I can follow with you if you have interest in this uh, when we have this solution approved. So for companies that are interested in this, but they are not actually based in Singapore as well, then 
we will discuss what, what can we do to actually uh, bring this solution across to you. So that is all I have for today. So Michelle, I'm back to you. Thank you, Jovan. So we've come to the um, end of the presentation. Now we are at the last section of our webinar, which is the question and answer section. So if you have any questions regarding the topics that were covered earlier, please um, feel free to type it into the chat box or you can also utilize the Q&A panel which you will find on your screen as well. All right, any questions uh, for our speakers today? All right, we have uh, received uh, a handful of questions. So just uh, let me uh, organize them really quickly. Okay, um, the first question we have uh, is regarding our print and apply uh, solution. Okay, one of our attendees is interested to know um, if the print and apply solution that we have um, that we have uh, introduced during the webinar, is it suitable for uh, mid-range uh, food manufacturers? And uh, what is the price range? Because he or she is actually concerned about the cost of invest investment and he's unsure uh, how long it will take to uh, actually break even. Uh, for this question, perhaps we can have um, Daryl to um, help us to advise our attendee here. Yep, sure, Misha. All right, uh, for print and apply solution, it's actually suitable for all kinds of customers, whether you are in the low tier, mid tier, or the enterprise level. Okay, uh, basically, print and apply is actually, uh, it ranges from, example, 20,000 to 200,000. Okay, so uh, if let's say in terms of the suitability, it will depend on each customer and your environment. How will you like the uh, print and apply to help you, depending on your production output and your expectation as well. All right. So if in terms of the uh, return of investment, there are actually a few ways that we can measure how it can be justified in terms of the investment, whether we are looking at uh, monetary value or we are looking at uh, process improvements or we are talking about uh, employees, uh, headcount, whether are you trying to look at to reduce the number of employees or you are trying to reduce their workload. Right, so there are actually many uh, parts of the uh, print apply that it can actually help to improve your situation. But uh, just to keep it simple, is that if you're looking at a straightforward return of investment, all right, first we have to look at the uh, amount. So, if I take for an example a 50,000 uh, ringgit uh, print and apply solution, right, so each person uh, roughly usually costs you around 2,000 ringgit per month, right? So, if you're just uh, talking about eliminating one guy. Okay, so 24,000 ringgit a year, in two years, you already uh, 48,000. So in two years, we already reached your capital. And instead of using two guys, now you can actually use one and your production output might be increased as well, depending on the solution. So yeah, I hope that actually answers one of your concerns. All right, thank you, Daryl. Um, I hope this addresses uh, this attendee's concern. If you have any other further questions, please uh, let us know. All right, next, um, we have a question regarding the temperature screening solution. Um, I believe, Daryl, this, uh, this one should be um, for you to advise as well from the pre-sales of our solution development team. So um, this attendee is saying that um, uh, their staff are required to take uh, temperature and uh, record manually at their entrances right now, mm -hmm. uh, as well as sign in using their ID badge. So is right. there a possibility to actually integrate both uh, processes? So temperature screening, as well as uh, staff attendance, both as one, because they have a thousand over staff at their premises and uh, the current method is uh, too time consuming and tedious. So do you have any advice for them? Yeah, okay. Uh, for the temperature screening solution, uh, definitely it's not, just, uh, it's not just about temperature screening, uh, you know, just taking the temperature and also identifying the employee, all right? We're actually incorporating the entire solution as uh, an integration with the uh, human resource management system, okay? So, of course, we can actually record who is the employee that's actually coming in, okay, using their ID, uh, rather than using their ID badge, 
okay, we actually use the facial recognition to recognize who is this particular employee. Okay, so once uh, that particular employee has checked in, then we can, we can actually know what is the temperature, who is the employee, and what time they are checking in. All right, so of course, uh, this can actually act as a two-way. So when it's actually coming in and also going out, we can actually track what is their movement, what time they come in and also what time they go out. So depending on the number of staff at your premises, then uh, the current method or the proposed method from us will actually be, uh, depending on the expectation, we can actually apply either by using your ID badge or using the face recognition. But uh, integrating it with the HRMS and also doing the temperature taking and recording the attendance is not a problem. That is something that we are looking at as a total so from a total solution point of view. All right, thank you. That's good to know. Yep. Um, all right, next, um, we have received a question regarding um, Sato App Storage, the cloud-based uh, data management system. Uh, Joven, I believe you presented a little bit about that earlier. So can you advise this attendee uh, who is asking um, uh, about the Sato App Storage? Um, he would like to know actually more about how it works as well as uh, if we have actually implemented this for uh, any existing uh, customers. Joven? Joven, you're on mute right now. Sorry. Okay. Um, Sato App Store is actually a cloud-based management service. We have implemented this for a number of large scale establishments across the region. Recently, actually, uh, just in Singapore for uh, FMB. So um, previously, they were actually uh, using the the predecessor of uh, FX3, which is TH2. Assuming and tedious for them because new new products, they need to update the item. Printers. You have to email out all the the in charge of. Then um, which outlets have actually already updated their South F storage. connected to this uh, cloud service. So each time there is a new for the English, you will do the update at the HQ, the, and then in the 40 hours will actually be updated at the same time. So in this case, uh, there is no, uh, problems of having outlets with uh, and each of them will all be having the new updated templates. So this actually saves a lot of time and uh, is able to give yeah. I hope this answered the question. Right. Thank you, Jovan. Um, all right. Let's have a look. Um, so just a quick reminder to attendees, if you have any additional questions, please uh, feel free to let us know um, and take this uh, opportunity to actually uh, clarify with uh, all our speakers here. Okay, next uh, we have a question from the floor um, regarding AEP. All right. Um, Daryl, maybe you can advise us on this. Um, this attendee is actually a food manufacturer, yep. and uh, he's actually looking for uh, to improve their inventory management. So he actually um, re remember recalls the CL four NX AEP solution that we showed earlier on in our slides. Mm. Um, he's asking whether it's possible to actually integrate our solution with their existing system. Yep, uh, CL four NX or. Uh in particular AEP solution where there are other printers that actually is capable of having the solution as well as example like uh, FX3 or CT4LX printers okay so basically AEP solution can be integrated to the existing ERP or WMS 
uh, but we will see what is the actual requirement is about so that uh, we can actually come up with a proper solution uh, if, uh, sorry, in the event that uh, integration is required, right? Uh, because the integration will actually work both ways. So definitely some customization on the ERP or WMS will be required. So, uh, but most of our customers in the food manufacturer, uh, or I mean, in the inventory management, they actually require this AEP solution to be capable of uh, stand alone, right? So this is just some additional information, right? So we can actually integrate it with your existing system, okay? Whether it's your ERP or whether it's your AWMS, but we can also, it's also actually capable of being stand alone as well. So I uh, hope this helps. Okay, thank you, Daryl. Right. All right. So um, let's. Okay, we have a few more questions uh, that we have received from the floor. Um, moving on. Um, it's regarding the FX3 LX printer, which uh, uh, you guys actually mentioned quite a bit during the webinar. Um, we have a we have an attendee here who is interested to know more about the um, specifications of the FX3 printer. Um, specifically, he wanted to know how many labels it can print per minute or per second, and uh, how many pieces of labels can it fit in a row. Uh, what is the maximum size of the label? So three things in all. Um, Chi King, would you be able to uh, advise on this one? Okay, sure. Okay, now the printer, in terms of speed, uh, it will be able to print out 152 mm per second. So, uh, meaning to say that if let's say you have a label size, which is the height. Okay, let's say the uh, 80 mm and the height of the label is uh, 152 mm. 152 mm is actually quite big. So, one second you will be able to print out one piece. And if let's say, for example, if your label size is a bit smaller, Example, 80 mm width uh, by 50 mm height. So with this speed, per second, you'll be able to print out three pieces. Okay. Next will be, okay, uh, what is the max size of the label? Okay. This printer for the width, okay, for the width of the label, it is able to take up the label, the minimum width. Minimum width is 25 mm. 282 mm width, all right? Now, the height of the label, it can go as small as 16 mm to as big as 500 mm. So it can take up quite a big piece of label. Now, in terms of uh, how many pieces of label in a row? Okay, typically, typically uh, let's say the label size is uh, 40 mm with 30 mm height. Uh, I think this is an example is because uh, quite a number of uh, our customers are actually using this common label size around this label size 40 mm by 30 mm to print the uh, expiry date and time description and uh, used by or prepared by date label. So for this particular label size, I would say that roughly one row of label you can fit in about 1000 pieces of labels. Okay, so yeah, basically this is the answer to this question. Thank you. Thank you, TK. Uh, another uh, more specific question or technical question about FX3 is that uh, you mentioned earlier on that uh, FX3 Alex is uh, able to play videos like training videos, right? So uh, one of our attendees here would like to know how big is the memory size uh, for storing these videos and roughly, you know, how many videos can it store? Okay, uh, for this printer, yes, one of the unique features will be it is able to store videos and also photos, okay, photos, uh, photos and videos, videos will be those videos with sound. Now, print, the printer has specifically allocated separately a one gigabyte memory to store these photos and videos. Okay, in one gigabyte of video, I would say typically, uh, let's say for example, just now the video that you saw uh, on how to prepare the burger, typically I think that video would be about 50 MB. Okay, so 50 MB per video, if you talk about the storage space of one gigabyte, I would 
fairly say you could store about close to 15 to 18 videos of those. It means uh, different different uh, types of videos. Yeah, you could uh, typically just store it like that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tiking. Okay. Uh, next, Joven, uh, I have a question for you. Um, one of our attendees here is actually interested in the CDMS solution. Uh, and uh, he's asking whether it can be integrated with the uh, ERP system. Yeah, and this CDMS is actually a standalone web-based application and cannot be integrated. Uh, but uh, if you if you require a software that has a, almost the same functionalities as a CDMS, uh, we can okay because Sato does do customized software as well. So uh, we are so we are able to build a, a software that is similar to CDMS, but uh, it is not pre. So the, but this solution will not be pre-approved by. It. Uh, PSG, but then uh, we can we may be able to try for the EDG one. So uh, if yeah, so uh, maybe you can uh, contact me uh, if you are if you have concerns about this integration, and then we can see how how we can actually work work around it. Okay, understand. Okay, next um. Okay, Joven, yep. uh, just a couple more questions from the mm. floor regarding um, labels, food labels mm. for the yep. uh, food industry. Um, one of them is asking uh, how, how long does it take, the lead time it takes uh, to design the uh, labels for the uh, uh, food uh, application and the cost of, uh, uh, of doing such uh, labels. Can you kindly advise on that? Okay, um, for the price of the label, okay, because the labels that I do are actually to customized. So uh, it's uh, the size, the design is actually totally based on what you need and, what you, and based on your operations requirements. So cu some customers may need uh, labels that is actually heat proof. Some customers may need uh, customers that can withstand the temperature as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. So uh, the price of the labels, I'm not able to give you outright. So uh, I will need to know what are your requirements. Then uh, from there, uh, we will, I will actually uh, we will actually work out the cost. Then uh, of course, there uh, as for as for the MOQ for our labels, the more you order, the the cheaper it is. So uh, so yeah, so uh, so that has to be dependent on the usage of your labels as well. So only with all, with all this info, then I will then be able to actually give you a proper price of the cost of the labor. How about the lead time that uh, it will require for these labels to be done? Uh, on average, it is actually two weeks uh, upon confirmation. Mm, okay, upon confirmation of the artwork, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. I see. Okay. Um, last question for you, Jovan. Um, oh. we, have a, we have a attendee here who is, I believe, a frozen food um, producer or mm. a distributor. So um, you're saying that they handle frozen food items mm. and uh, one of their key uh, issues with their labels is actually that the labels um, fall off easily because of the, uh, mm. the temperature of the food items they handle. So um, do we have any solution for such applications? Um, yep, uh, we have uh, quite a few food customers that uh, have actually uh, requirements to actually store their items inside cold room, then uh, inside such cold room, the temperature can go as low as minus 25 degrees Celsius. So yeah, so um, one of the reasons that such labels fall off is because of the glue that is used. So for such customer, we actually uh, propose uh, them labels with special kind of glue that can actually withstand such temperatures. So of course, uh, we will before any confirmation of any order, we will actually pass you some sample labels for you to try out. Then uh, only, af only after testing and uh, only after making sure that this actually works in your environment, then uh, we will actually proceed with the order just to be safe also. Right, so sample labels will be provided to the customers, right? Yeah, and, and you will do some testing mm. for the customers before the order can be uh, successfully placed. All right, understand. Okay. Yeah, perhaps Misha I would like to just yes. add on on the on, on the questions of labels that we are talking about. It is uh it is good to know to the attendees that actually Sato is also uh, a proud 
owner and manufacturer of our own labels or consumables as well as the, the thermal ribbons that is being used together with our food system. Okay, so uh, we have our own manufacturing facility and with that we are able to, like what Joven has mentioned earlier, we are able to provide uh, the different types of labels specifically suited to the customer's needs. If let's say they would like something which is uh, waterproof, uh, which is able to withstand very low temperature. And also, actually, in, uh, in, in one of our customers' example in Malaysia, we are also able to develop a type of labels which uh, is uh, able to be waterproof, put inside the freezer or chiller, that means chill or freeze environment. At the same time, it is also able to withstand high temperatures of boiling of the food package with the labels on it and still remain intact. So, uh, yeah, this is one of uh, the cake confectionery customers that we have in Malaysia that we have done this. We have uh, tested it out with the customers and it works. Meaning to say from a very low temperature to quite a high temperature, like a uh, warm to boiling condition, uh, our labels still can uh, withstand this, this big harsh environment. So uh, why we can do that is actually because we work with uh, the, our R&D team okay, to get this requirement right and then do a lot of tests and at the same time recommend the right type of labels to specifically suit the particular customer's requirement. So I think this is uh, worth noting that uh, we are able to, to help customers regardless of uh, all their requirements. So we will we are very happy to uh, to receive all this uh, inquiry and also work closely with the customer to achieve the desired results and uh, also achieve their expectation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tiking, for the additional uh, information. All right. So, um, any last questions for the speakers here? Okay. All right, no problem. If not, um, we have actually come to the end of uh, the webinar. So if you have any other questions uh, after this webinar, please uh, do feel free to email to us. All right, or um, you can you know, just uh, get in touch with us via our websites and query form as well. So um, thank you very much again for joining us today. Uh, we hope that this uh, webinar session has been insightful and uh, useful to you. So, um, Again, uh, we will be compiling all the um, questions and answers we have gone through today and we will send them across to you together with the presentation slides in the coming week. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining us and uh, have a great uh, rest of the day. All right, see you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, T. King, Joven and Daryl as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you bye. very much. Keep in touch. Thank you.